Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. Booty booty. All right, all right, all right. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing three things you may or may not have missed from Dune 2021. At this point, I've seen this movie like 11 times. I've studied the source material, so I think I may be a little bit insightful to those uh, average watchers that may or may not have looked up any of the Dune source material. Uh, before I jump into any of that, please do me a massive favor, and if you enjoy these Dune videos, uh, slap a like on it, uh, make sure you subscribe, and turn your notifications on. Also, leave me a comment down below. The like goal for this video is going to be 420. <laughs> Get it? Let the spice flow, baby! Um, also, uh, Warner Brothers, like, copyright claims pretty much any video footage that I show in these videos. I've tried to make this video a few times, and every single time, Warner Brothers claims it with a copyright strike. So instead, I was gonna try to show pictures. Uh, let's begin. Alright, now first things first. One of the biggest things that I saw... Uh, people asking, speaking of which, I actually did a right after I saw the movie for multiple times the first time, uh, I think it was last week, I did a live stream, like, hour-long review where I really go into my thoughts about the movie, how I think it's fucking amazing, um, but mostly I saw comments in that live stream and then also over on the Dune subreddit where people are saying, like, there was actually a meme, like, this person said, how the fuck is this in the year 10,137, they got these fucking giant spaceships, and they're fighting with knives and swords? Well, uh, obviously that was a meme joke, because the person said they ended up doing a 360 and walked right out of the theater. Obviously, if you walk into something, you do a 360, that means you're facing the screen again. Now that I'm done breaking down that meme... The, the technology in Dune really all relates back to this motherfucker named Holtzman. He was this famed physicist who basically developed a bunch of different technologies uh, that are used in Dune. So the main reason why the uh, technology, so to speak, looks so low tech, but they're set in the future and they can do crazy things like travel space and they have these body shields is because there was this thing known as the Butlerian Jihad, where basically... There's this, uh, these thinking machines are created, and this is a gross summarization. Obviously, if you want me to go into in-depth details and make a video full out on the Butlerian Jihad, well, let me know down below in the comment section. But just to summarize all of that good shit, the Dune world in current day, in Dune 2021, all of thinking machines, all of advanced technology has been wiped out. The main reason being is because Frank Herbert, the author who wrote this story, uh, it was during the 60s, and he, he hated sci-fi. He actually wanted to write a fantasy story that was uh, sort of like away from all of the, the common sci-fi and fantasy tropes. So basically what he did was he wanted to write a universe in which computers, or back then in the 60s, you know, thinking machines, nuclear weapons, those were all wiped out. So the society ha is kind of feudal, but also super advanced in the same way. So it's kind of like he didn't want to predict where computers would be at and where future technology was going on Earth. So he just kind of got rid of that. He said it 10,000 years in the future, and there's a reason why nukes and computers are wiped out. And the main reason being is because, from the author's perspective, he didn't want to try to predict where that would be going. But in the Dune universe, uh, the way that this thing fucking works is why it's such a great movie, uh, in my opinion, and great series, great everything. Uh, Dune is the highest-selling sci-fi novel of all time. Um, but it, it's... Uh, it works because there's really no other story that's like that. You could tell how Dune inspired Star Wars and Star Trek. And really, if Dune had that advanced technology, it would have become another one of those, like, you know, that lore from back then. So Frank Herbert wanted to separate his work from that. But uh, in more specific details, uh, the, the thing that Paul Trades has on his body when he's fighting Gurney Halleck, and literally almost every single character in this movie has, except for when they're, you know, walking on the sands of Arrakis, because that, you know, uh, it's kind of explained in the movie, but shields drive sandworms fucking nuts. So no one on Arrakis uses those. So they use uh, weirding way and different fighting techniques, but no one's using a shield um, on Arrakis while walking, uh, you know, in sandworm territory. But basically, a shield is a defensive uh, shield, commonly referred to simply as a shield, or a Holtzman shield. It's got a protective energy fields, field that control that could surround the person who wore it. A uh, shield was produced by a Holtzman generator, the field deriving from phase one of the suspensor nullification effect. Shields can be calibrated to permit the passage of matter below given speeds. This is vital in personal defense shields, as one would suffocate within a shield that did not admit atmospheric gases, which 
relating this back to the movie, uh, we got to see Dr. Yue replace um, uh, the Duke's back tooth with a uh, gas capsule. And they knew that that's the only thing that can pass through shields. Obviously, that and slow-moving knives. Um, and remember, he was shot with a dart in the back, um, and he couldn't reach it. But basically, uh, that that tooth that was put in there was this highly contained, this highly infectious gas, and you see it murdered everyone around them except for uh, uh, the Baron was able to survive just barely. And you know we see him starting to heal towards the end of the movie in that uh, like oil uh, tub. But basically, uh, depending on the shield setting, the object speed while passing through the shield would range from six to nine centimeters per second. A shield could also be set to cover either the left or right side of the person if the specific need for that arose. Now, one of the other things I think is worth mentioning, this sort of relates to the technology in this world. Most of the technology in Dune, in the universe of Dune, is, is a lot of it is given credit to this dude known as Holtzman. That's what the Holtzman shield that I was just talking about. But basically, Holtzman was a famed physicist and scientist who pioneered a branch of theory relating to the repellent force of subatomic particles. Most of the discoveries in this area of physics uh, to bear the root named after him, since they are based on the Holtzman effect. So basically, he came up with the Holtzman shield, suspensors, the glow globe, subatomic fusion, and space travel. And uh, one of the other things I did, you know, sort of see is that, like, some people were commenting, like, yo, they get these giant fucking space lasers on the ship. Why didn't they just use that from the jump? It's kind of like, you, you did see it. They're going to explain it in future movies. But basically, when they do drop something like a laser onto a shield, it's a fucking nuclear weapon. So it's it's like if you use that, you better not care about any of the people or anything that's alive around it. So uh, that's going to be something that's probably uh, further explored in uh, future movies. And speaking of which, that's the next thing I want to talk about, which is the sequel. Now, obviously, this is not something that you missed. I'm not going to spend that much time talking about it. But, you know, The Hollywood Reporter uh, is quoting Dennis Villeneuve and saying that they are officially moving forward. Uh, he, he is quoted as saying, I just received news from Legendary that we are officially moving forward with Dune Part 2. And he goes on to say, It was a dream of mine to adapt Frank Herbert's Dune. And I have the fans, the cast, and crew, Legendary, and Warner Brothers to thank for supporting this dream. This is only the beginning. So obviously, that's super fucking exciting. Um... It's, it's amazing that we have a... God damn, my hair looks crazy as shit. How am I just now noticing that? Um, it's fucking amazing that we have a sci-fi series to look forward to over the next, like, I don't know, five years? Ah, this, this is so good. It, it does, you know, it did leave me a little bit upset that we were on such a cliffhanger, but the fact that we he took so much time telling part one, oh, I cannot wait to part two and three and however many they decide to do because there's a bunch of source material in this world. Um, one of the things, or another thing, that you may not have noticed, and this will be the last thing I'll mention, is a combination of the Bene Gesserit and the Space Guild. So, the Space Guild in the 1984 Dune looked fucking crazy. They were like a worm in this sort of a back-to-tank setup, and for the Dune 2021, um, in the very first, like, five minutes of the movie, we see the Space Guild and the Speaker show up on, uh, Paul Trades' home world, Kaladin, and they ask, hey, you, the Emperor says you want to take over Arrakis, and obviously... House of Trades accepts, but there are several dudes in um, helmets behind him, and those are the Space Guild members. Uh, so, like, th it's said that they manipulate the spice so much, obviously they use it for space travel, it has changed the way they look entirely. They are no longer human, and there's they're this more of a primordial creature-looking fucking thing, like maybe something out of H.P. Lovecraft. So they're, it doesn't look like they're necessarily going that route. Um, I put up an image of what the Space Guild looks like uh, for the Dune 2021, but basically they uh, will play a much heavier role in the later uh, sequels to Dune Part 1, and also their plot and their role is sort of tied in with the Bene Jesuit, which are the Space Witches, which is something that I kind of already spoiled in my live stream that I did right after the show. But basically, Paul's mother is related to the Baron Harkonnen. Like, that's her father. And the Bene Jesuit uh, hid her genealogy from um, pretty much everybody to keep their plans a secret. So Paul is, in fact, the Kwisatz Haderet and... Um, Haderet... Uh, but uh, I, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. This seems like a good point to watch, uh, to, to wrap this video up. Uh, let the spice flow and let, leave me some comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, 
uh, if you want more of these Dunes videos, well, one of the ways to let me know is by uh, sharing this on all sorts of social media. Super special shout out to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your hunts reviews. And a super special shout out to you, the viewer, the person watching this video right now. Obviously, I wouldn't make these videos if you guys didn't watch. Um, thank you all so, so much for watching. My name is Mark and this has been Sir Hunts Reviews. That sounded more like it.